is TechStrong TV. Hey, hey, welcome back to KubeCon 2020 in Detroit City, Motor City. We're having a great time. I'm filling in for Alan. He stepped away to refresh and get uh, retooled here. And so I have the pleasure of being joined by Shahar Fogel from uh, Rookout. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here. Uh, you know, we, t we talked in Valencia, enjoyed yes, chatting with each other, and I'm sure a lot of things have changed. We'll get into that. Let folks know about who you are and also who Rookout is. Cool. So my name is Shahar. I'm the CEO of Rookout. Uh, basically what we do is uh, develop a, a platform for developer first observability, basically giving observability capabilities to developers in the way and in the places they're used to getting their data from and enabling them to solve issues much faster to understand what's going on in their remote environments in a click of a button without the need to write code, without redeployment, and even in production. So actually solving production uh, issues much faster around five times faster than they can today and uh, you know, giving them, reducing the, the frustration of, of debugging or, or issue resolution for engineers themselves. Kind of shift left for observability. Exactly. All the way exactly. right to production. Yeah, and every, eventually, you know, everyone is telling the story. You know, even the bigger players that are uh, have built uh, great products for ops people. You know, they know that their growth engines are the developers shift left, and everyone's talking about it. Uh, is driving adoption within organizations, uh, both decisions and usage. So, you know, we aim to give them the capabilities again for it, for them, and not for you know taking ops and SRE's products and trying to push it towards the developers. Yeah, it's kind of a big thing to try to bolt on to a developer's uh, IDE or development environment. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, nothing is easy, yeah, <laughs> no, that's why we're here, yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about um, what's different about observability when you're early in the software process from a developer's perspective. What do they want that maybe not as important when you're all the way in production, or what are the commonalities? So I think it's very much related to, to the cloud native world. You know, cloud native has kind of changed the world, the way you, you manage software, the way you distribute, the way you monitor and, and, and do everything around that. But eventually kind of engineers have been left behind. And, and, and the change that, uh, that happened in industry is also you know, the way that software is being developed has been changed, not only maintained. So the engineers in their day to day, you know, the notion of it works on my machine is dead. Yeah. Uh, even throughout the software development lifecycle, they are operating in remote environments and you know dev QA staging wherever they are, uh, where they have their Kubernetes clusters or you know containers, serverless, whatever, and they have kind of similar challenges to production. There, they re have to redeploy every time they want to test something. If they want to uh, add new logs or metrics and traces, it's redeployment, redeployment. It's not only compiling and checking it on their own machine. Uh, so that's kind of you know what we've seen over the last uh, few years that. Uh, that the, the challenges in the, their day to day on what they're spending time and where's their kind of bottlenecks in, in their operation has changed and this is kind of what we aim to help them with. Yeah, it's uh, probably not the best solution to run Prometheus in your dev environment and try to do distributed tracing and figure out what's happening. Yeah, that's, that's difficult. That's <laughs> a, difficult <laughs> a little bit of a heavyweight. I mean, a great solution yeah. uh, for other environments. But tell us a little bit, I know you had some analysis for KubeCon. Tell us what's happening. Yeah, so basically, you know, what, what we always aim to do is to shift left and to give developers uh, the, um, both the data they need in terms of more, you know, we have the live debugger, we have the live logger, we're adding metrics and, and all sorts of capability in terms of what we give them, but also the how. And the how is very important and we've seen it, uh, we can talk about it in a second, but we've seen it that developers, you know, we have our web ID that, you know, is a full platform, you know, we can do everything in terms of real estate within the browser, but uh, sometimes, Developers, as we know, developers like to consume products in various different ways. Uh, so we have, of course, our web UI, and we've just released our ID plugin for uh, the IntelliJ family, so uh, for the JetBrains family, so IntelliJ and, and GoLang and, and, and these types of uh, IDEs that will enable them to, to use and consume Rookout from within the ID. So putting the non-breaking breakpoints there, whether it's production all the way to the end, you know, you can uh, you can instrument production. Uh, directly from your ID, uh, but also, through, as I mentioned before, also throughout the software development lifecycle. So, you know, even if you have your dev environment, which is uh, distributed and it's, it's not that far, but it's half far, and the deployment time is not three hours, but 20 minutes, every time you have to add a new log line, it's uh, 20 minutes going to have a coffee, 20 minutes going to talk to your friend. So this is, you know, 
you're using Rookout, you don't have to redeploy all the time. You just press the button. Within a millisecond, you can add the log or the metric that you want, and you know that's kind of the more of the productivity play, you know, the velocity of development, the quality of development, the, their ability to uh, to leverage the new types of infrastructure that exists out there, uh, but not feeling the pains that it brings with it for them. Yeah, very familiar with uh, Jeb Brainson and the Intella. J, et cetera, yeah. PyCharm, all the yeah, other exactly. uh, IDE environments. It seems like, I mean, the more you can make a tool operate in the way that developers are already familiar with, you know, they know they know how to do, you know, stops and steps through code and do testing exactly. within their IDEs and their local environment. So how, how would that look in an IDE to the developer if they plugged in Rookout? What would, what just, would pop up, what would show, how would just, they interact? Just as they, uh, they're used to using normal breakpoints, you know, they have the lines, they're marking the point, so they're marking the point and they'll have kind of uh, two rows, one is the normal breakpoint, one is the Rookout breakpoint. When they place that, you know, they can, of course, slice and dice which environments they want to collect the data from, like, like a normal platform, uh, whether it's production, pre-production, you know, a single pod or 10,000 pods. Uh, they can have conditional breakpoints, they can have rate limiting or, or, or context uh, understanding for, for what they want to collect, um, customized log lines, whatever. Very much similar to the experience that they have. In addition, of course, to, uh, you mentioned, you know, how they like to use it, APIs, and CLI capabilities mm -hmm. to enable them to automate, to enable them to, you know, to geek out and and and, and use and leverage the value that we bring in, a, a, you know, any way that they want. Yeah, all your all your messages are right there, command line. If you want to jump in that way, yeah, great. Um, so, uh, how do people get a hold of that? Is that do they have to buy a subscription to it? Is it just uh, so downloadable course, and from the IDE? How do you course, use it? Of course, you know, uh, you know. As most You've got to make some money. We, I mean, we know too. We are making money, thank God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, but eventually, you know, we have a community edition. They can go, they can download. It's free, you know, with license restri restrictions uh, of that sort. But, you know, afterwards, if they want to increase, if they want uh, company-wide adoption, they can contact us and uh, we'll find a way to work together. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, so tell us about the show. I mean, I, so, so what's interesting, I'm having more conversations about Developer productivity, engineering productivity. Times are getting tight. People need to get the most out of their resources. And you know, developers have kind of moved from, or IIT have moved from sort of the back office to it's part of our business strategy. We got to deliver code and capabilities through software and mm -hmm. cloud, cloud native. Uh, and that, that seems to be one of the big drivers around why there's such an interest around developer productivity. Do you see it from an individual developer, I want to be more productive, or it's more driven by development managers, engineering efficiency, things like that? I think both. Uh, first of all, you know, engineers want to spend their time writing code or writing bugs or writing features, but you know, whatever they're writing, but you know, to deliver value to the organization. They don't like debugging. They don't like to deal with stuff which is not actually writing uh, business Switching logic. Switching between tools and exactly. environments. And exactly. So you know, we give it to them. We reduce you know the the time that they spend on things that they don't like significantly, and you know eliminate waiting time or deployment times or, or context switching, uh, which within their day to day. So you know that's that's on the individual level. You know, organizational level, of course. You know, f first of all, you know every. Every company wants to be uh, productive. Every one of the company wants to improve themselves. But as you mentioned, you know, times are tough. Uh, we're seeing it. We've seen it yesterday with uh, some uh, big companies' uh, reports and, 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 and plunging in the in the stock market. But but eventually, everyone is feeling it. You know, the the, the VC space and the investment uh, in our space. And you know, where, where a year ago uh, we would have talked to clients in terms of sales processes. You know, it was only production and customers and mean time to resolution and that kind of messaging around it today kind of shifted and everyone looking at cost and everyone looks at unit economics and everyone looks at spend and you know, some layoffs and reductions and, and these types of elements, which brings back kind of how can I squeeze more out of my engineering dollars? How can I do more with less? Uh, which is kind of the, the goggles for the engineering managers or the higher up management, uh, which is Kind of, in addition, of course, to the production value, which is always there for Rucka, you know, we enable them. You know, on a scale, you save an engineer an hour a day or two hours a day times X amount of engineers. That uh, you know, 
that can multiply to a huge okay. amount. And you know, in the past, as when you know money was cheap uh, last year, or you know, what happened happened in the market. You know, you wanted more out of your engineering team. You throw four, three, four more people uh, to the fire, and uh, you'll get it. Today, it's not like that. Today, it's like it's hard to find those people, right? I mean, you it, can, but it's, it's hard to find, and it's hard to pay. Yeah, uh, they don't Especially want experienced. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that's kind of what we're hearing from client from uh, from our clients is that Rookout kind of gives superpowers even to junior engineers. So you know, the all the the older, the more experienced engineers, you know, they know what they're doing. They know how the co code looks. They know how uh, the application is behaving. Someone new joins, and he has no idea. And you know, just by reading the code, you know, he can't understand anything. So we give him the ability to you know sit with Rookout, you know kind of debug or understand what's going on in production, in real production, not staging, not uh, uh, simulations of the application in closer environments. You know, it's like reducing the, the ramp up time uh, super significantly. Now the uh, plugin for IDs that's available today? Available that on our website. Very cool. Why don't you stop by and see it? Sounds pretty cool. Over I'll here. run over and take a look. <laughs> well good. You know, it, it's interesting, you know, since Valencia, a lot more people have been more comfortable coming out, I think. I mean, even Valencia, it was well attended, and it was great to see so many developers, t-shirts, backpacks, people <laughs> walking around. Swag like, bags. That's my people, hey. Uh, but in here, you know, also, too, really well attended. It seems like people are taking more time to have deeper conversations yeah. when they're coming by booths or stopping in here. Um, I think right now is sort of the time to stand and deliver. We got to we got to ship code, right? We moved to the cloud. We invested in cloud native. We've done these things. You know, when now we have to live with it. Tough. Now yeah. we have to live with it. You know, yeah. to maintain it, to continue to develop uh, new features. To you know, to, um, a lot of big enterprises needs to modernize themselves. A lot of new challenges uh, out there. Very cool. Well. Hope you continue to have a good show. Thank you. Uh, great to talk with you again, Shahar, and uh, good luck with the rest of KubeCon, and maybe we'll see you in Amsterdam or whatever the next April, conference. right? Yes, April. Yeah. yeah, we're trying to figure out logistics already. How are we going to do that in another show? We'll figure it out. So we'll get there. All right, man. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Cheers. Uh, be sure to check them out. You can go to rookout.com or io.com. Yep. Hong Kong. Okay, perfect. Yeah, definitely check it out. But we're having lots of conversation about de developer productivity and taking some of the barriers and uh, things that are that getting in the way to help uh, folks be able to ship code. So don't go away. We're going to be right back with some more great interviews, just like with Shahar. So we'll be here. We'll see you in a minute.